time so welcome to my channel where learning art is fun. I'm Sarah and in today's video I'm going to show you how I draw Chief who's one of the dogs from the new movie coming out Isle of Dogs. So if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe and hit the bell icon as well so you don't miss out on any future videos. So if you're ready let's go. So here's a sneaky peek at how the drawing turned out and I'm using my Strathmore Toned Grey sketchbook today. I've also printed out a reference picture of Chief and decided to use both my Copic markers and my Prismacolor colour pencils since there is quite a lot of black to Chief's fur and using markers as a base can help you block in those areas and fill in the tooth of the paper a lot more quickly than coloured pencil alone. So I've picked out a few markers to use as base colours and chosen a couple of coloured pencils in different shades of purple, blue, brown as well as my white and black to layer over the markers later. But you don't have to use exactly the same materials or art supplies as me as the techniques I use can be applied to any felt tip markers or colour pencils. So once I've chosen my colours I drew an outline sketch of Chief which looks a bit tricky but really I just wanted to mark in areas where the colour of his hair changed and also note which direction the hair was growing in to make the colouring in easier later on. So I started off by putting in the darkest areas to the pupils of the eyes and I was careful to leave a small circle for adding highlights later before moving on to the nose area which was the topic of our quick tips video this week and I'll put a link into that video up above in the card. And because I'd already roughed out the shape of the nose, I went in to mark the darkest areas first. So those were along the top of the nose, down the middle of the nose and the nostrils, taking care again to leave any highlighted areas. And after this, I started off working from the center of his face outwards. And I was using strokes with my marker the same length and direction to that on my reference picture. So placing the marker on the page and lifting it up at the end of the stroke so the lines get thinner at the end and look a little bit more like hair. And you'll see how those marks I made on the reference picture to start with can really help you kind of work out where everything's going work in sections at a time and it really helps to kind of map out those areas so you don't get lost. And you'll also see that by using these markers I was really able to cover quite a lot of space quite quickly because the thing with colour pencil is that it can be quite a slow process and it can take quite a bit of time to fill in that tooth of the paper and cover large areas. So using the markers really helped kind of speed up the process and also protected and preserved that tooth of the paper so that you can add colour pencils later on and not have to worry about any problems by adding too many layers. So once I'm done with the black I then went in with a grey shade and added that to his nose again leaving those lighter areas on the top of his nostril and in the middle of his nose. And then I went in with a couple of shades of purple and just filled in some of the areas that I'd noticed on the reference picture were lighter, just to kind of define areas of his face. So I would say as well, don't worry too much about blending the different colours seamlessly at this stage. We're really just kind of blocking in areas to cover that paper, to cover the tooth of the paper and to mark in the different areas where the hair either changes direction or changes colour slightly. And we're going to sort of fill in those um, areas and make them more seamless by using our colour pencils. So now using the colour pencils I'm going in with a light blue for Chief's eyes and I didn't use markers for this bit because I didn't really have a blue marker that I thought would be suitable but being that the eye area was a lot smaller than the rest of his face it didn't really matter and as long as you use an eye sharp pencil you can really get into that tooth of the paper and layer over different colours as well. And again I was careful to leave those highlighted areas 
so that when I went in with my white colour pencil that really showed up on this grey paper. And then it was just a case of going in with my colour pencils and going over those areas where the colours changed from the purple to the black and kind of blending them in with my greys and the different shades of pencils that I'd got. And this can be a really effective technique to cover the space but also to get a really nice texture to it as well and you can really get your fine point pencil in and create some like sort of hair shapes and make it more detailed as well. The other thing about when you're colouring in the white of the eye is to realise that perhaps it's not always white, white as you think it might be. Quite often the white of the eye can look quite grey. So in order to make those highlighted areas stand out, try adding a pale grey and leaving those really white areas just for the highlights of the eye. Another good thing about using markers to start with and then layering over details and refining with coloured pencils afterwards is that you haven't had to really burnish which means to apply lots of pressure with your coloured pencil to cover up the tooth of the paper so you can add like other colours in on top and it can really stand out and be effective like you'll see with the white I'm adding here and you can still use that white to blend those colour pencil layers together but you've still got quite a lot of the tooth of the paper which really grips onto that pencil and helps it to stand out. I also like using this grey paper as it's kind of used as a mid-tone as well so if you didn't want to do the the mixed media or layering with the markers first and then adding coloured pencil. If you just wanted to use your coloured pencils you've already got kind of a mid grey tone down so it does make applying your colours a lot easier. So now I'm just going in and finishing off a few details making those white hairs um, under his nose a lot finer and just finishing off a few details. And this picture did take me a lot less time than if I was just using coloured pencil alone. A few touches under his chin and this picture was finished. That's all for all today up I hope you've enjoyed drawing Chief the dog from the Isle of Dogs. If you have, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next week for another arty video. Bye!